Hello! Welcome to the first or second episode of the Chronic Inquisition podcast. I haven't decided if I'm going to delete the first one or keep it up, so welcome to a 28-year-old lady talking about internet drama and just really whatever comes in my head. So I haven't decided if that's going to be the theme song or if I'm going to do like a Bailey Sarian ba-da-da, da-da-da. But until I figure that out, let me know what you guys think. Um, first, we're going to start with uh, snippets of just what's going on in the world. Um, I want to talk about the Matt Reif controversy, weird thing going on. Um, he's like, cancel culture, red pill, like, went in the opposite of direction of his audience and the female audience he created. Uh, to start with, I watched the special, and the joke we're talking about was a domestic violence joke where he was like, a waitress had a black guy in Baltimore, and he was like, she should be in the kitchen, and if she was a good cook, she wouldn't have a black eye. And it just was, one, distasteful, but two, not funny. He acts like he invented the wheel, but that has been like a joke that women belong in the kitchen, and you wouldn't get hit if you could cook or clean for like ever and he just is so self-important that in his interviews he acts like he invented comedy and he's in a niche field and just all this stuff when a lot of comedians when it comes down to it are just like it wasn't funny it wasn't a good joke it wasn't well done it just and it's offensive but you know comedy is subjective and people like to push the limit and I just think if you're gonna try to go for an offensive joke I don't know at least make it funny don't just make a same tired joke and then claim you reinvented the wheel but what do I know I'm a woman so he probably doesn't care about my opinion uh and then he acts like comedians just no one's done it and everyone's scared but I want to bring up he said in uh, Jordan, what is his name, Peterson interview, that uh, he only posts his crowd work on TikTok and not his stand-up because if people know, then it's not funny and won't get a laugh. I think that was a mistake because his stand-up was not great. And as someone who is forced to watch a lot of stand-up because it's her husband's favorite, uh, I want to point out that Burt Kreischer has been doing the same machine jokes and jokes about his wife and his kids and he'll reuse jokes and they make me die laughing every time because he is an excellent storyteller and an excellent comedian. I can rewatch his specials and laugh like it's the first time I'm watching. I also think he got famous from being very handsome, a very handsome comedian and um, he was making 25 million dollars I think I heard a year and from his female audience. And to just throw that away because you don't want to be known for your looks and, like, all this stuff is just stupid. Just take the money. Who cares? It's the internet. And it was funny because in the Jordan Peterson interview, obviously Jordan Peterson did not know who he was or the joke. He didn't even watch the special. He watched some of his TikToks that are viral, and it's just him doing crowd work. And I think he should have worked his comedy into some TikToks to see the response but you know that's what he chose and you know that's fine just don't be dumb if I'm making 25 million dollars a year based on my looks I don't care one I wouldn't but two it's just really funny that he is so self-important that he made that decision um his comedy was tired like late 90s early 2000s white man humor where it's just crapping on women and I don't care none of it was original and he acts like it's so original and no one's doing it and all well no one's doing it because it's been done that's not funny it's just tired and alienating the female audience that you have and built upon for these conservative grifters is the stupidest thing I've ever heard when you're making 
$25 million a year. Um, I also think that Tana is a Ma- Mongo mate. I don't know how to say her name. On her podcast with her best friend Brooke said it best was like, I, he was on an interview on their podcast and said that he knows that the only reason people hate him is because they're jealous, which is a very childish thing to say. And Tana's response was, so people were just jealous of Osama bin Laden, which I thought was the perfect response to someone like that. But I don't know. He's having like some type of meltdown to defend himself and it's embarrassing. And running to Jordan Peterson for like a whatever interview is probably the dumbest move you can make in your career also when he got backlash he posted a helmet for disabled people and just all this stuff it's just like my guy just shut your mouth every time you speak it's like you're putting your foot in your mouth and you're gonna lose your audience and your sponsors and your millions of dollars but again you know, he can just be an idiot, but that's my thoughts on Matt Reif. Uh, if you're going to be insulting, at least be funny. Um, and now on to the main topic of this podcast is Mr. David Dobrik himself, the cult leader who created the Vlog Squad and has abandoned all of them in a hilarious twist, which we all knew would happen. But um, I think we need to talk about the seriousness of what he did. Just at the top recently, T. Spill, I think her name is, reported that uh, the TikTok battles Jason Nash and do are doing is really sad and kind of a money grab. And like he's on it all the time. And if you don't know what a TikTok battle is, it's when your audience gives you money and just is... You know, you're doing crazy things. I mean, he's 50 years old. And I don't know if he saved any of his money from his vlog squad era. I mean, he did have a following. He could have kept vlogging. But obviously, the only reason people were watching is because of David Dobrik. And I, yeah, it's really sad. And he stopped on YouTube because of a snapchat deal and all the backlash from 2020 2021 and he's making a lot of money from that but he just kind of left the people who really helped his career and stuff like that now some of them made it like uh, zane and he then jeff wittick obviously and some of the other ones who are still working and still popular and relevant and have an audience and Jeff Wittick spoke to the paparazzi recently that David is running from the lawsuit I'm going to talk about and exactly what happened, but I think that's really pathetic and sad, and he should not have the clout and deals he's still getting, because I honestly think he's a monster. I also think Casey Neistat should release the documentary he made about the whole situation, but that are those are the updates on what I'm about to talk about just at the top so we don't get lost about the current state of what's happening. Now, the article I wrote about this is called David Dobrik Needs to be Held Accountable, and the victims are Jeff Wittick and Annalise Jr. Now, this is all opinion-based. I'm just recording commentary on the information I could have. don't sue me. So, I want to share a little bit of my story. In 2017, I was hit by a drunk driver. I was injured with a traumatic brain injury and a concussion. What I really didn't know was my life was going to be changed forever. My health has taken a serious roller coaster drop after all of that night, and it's slow. The symptoms show over time and can worsen over time. I've been diagnosed with multiple physical and mental illnesses. I am disabled. I live in severe pain every day, and Matt Ray can get bent. This happened when I was 21, and I'm 28 now. I have the greatest empathy for Jeff and Annalise. I understand what it's like for your entire life to change in an instant. 
living with pain, feeling trapped. And I'm very passionate about this story and won't stop talking about it for that exact reason. Excuse me. I think there should be justice for Annalise and Jeff. And I want to talk about it because I don't think enough people are. And literally, he ruined these people's lives and is still getting clout and money and all this stuff he does not deserve. I'm getting ahead of myself like I usually do. Um, Who are these people? Who is David Dobrik? According to Wikipedia, David Julian Dobrik is a Slovak internet personality who found early success on Vine and then started his vlog channel in 2015. And he started a group called the Vlog Squad. They would film comedic, outrageous, and dangerous stunts for millions of views and It was like a house party, almost reality show in these four-minute, five-minute vlogs. So who is the the vlog squad? Generally, people consider the vlog squad to be Nash... Sorry, wow. Jason Nash, Natalie, Josh Peck, Zane, he, Mariah, Scotty Sire, Ilya, Nick, which I believe is Jonah and his siblings, Vardan and Susie, Matt King, Toddy Smith, Corinna, Kopf, Jeff Wittick, Joe, Carly, and Aaron. Now, there are a lot of videos on the Vlog Squad and David Dobrik. I have some posted on my article at chronicinquisition.com. So, Let's talk about the victims. Who is Jeff Wittick? According to Wikipedia, Wittick was born and grew up in Staten Island, New York, where he attended high school as a teenager. Wittick worked in a local barber shop, out of which he also sold drugs at the time. He continued selling drugs after relocating to Miami, Florida, and was eventually arrested in 2011 for possession of marijuana and cocaine and a controlled substance, as well as illegal drug trafficking. These charges were dismissed for lack of, a, of an apparent search warrant, search warrant, after which he moved to Los Angeles. Water break. He joined the vlog squad in 2017. He started filming episodes for his online talk show, Jeff's Barbershop, in 2019, and gained enough popularity to become a brand ambassador for Old Spice. He filmed a lot with Dobrik. He helped with these crazy pranks and stunts. He was typecasted as the criminal, drug dealer, tough guy. There were a lot of prison jokes and prison pranks. Dobrik had a lot of problematic behavior and pranks. He would typecast people in his vlogs and use them how he saw fit. He encouraged an environment where the crazier his squad was, the more time they received in the vlog. He put these people in dangerous situations. And they would do it because their careers depended on him. He created a cult-like environment. Also, he didn't pay these people. He just did it for the exposure. And they would gain a big following because he was so popular. And a lot of the times he'd barely be in the videos. It would just be all of his pretty much cast members who weren't really cast members. His quote-unquote friends who he abandoned, as I said at the top, very recently. Um. There's a great video called The Cult of David Dobrik and how he kept the group. Go watch it. It's very eye-opening. They go behind the psychology of it, and it's honestly super fascinating. So, let's talk about what actually happened. In June 2020, Wittick was injured in Utah while filming a stunt with David Dobrik. And the vlog squad, David Dobrik was illegally operating an excavator in a shallow lake while Wittick swung from a rope attached to the end of the excavator's arm. When Dobrik started spinning the rope too fast and abruptly stopped, Wittick hit the excavator and fell into the water, upside down with his foot stuck in the rope. His skull was fractured in nine places. His left eye socket was fractured. His hip and foot were broken, and the ligaments in his leg were torn. Wittick would continue to regularly... Wittick would continue to regularly film his Jeff's Barbershop series without addressing these injuries. So, 
Casey Neistat, as I said, made a docu-series, Don't Try This at Home, was released in April of 21 after nearly 10 months of speculation from the public and compromised in five episodes. Oh, compromised. It was comprised in five episodes in which Wittick explained the circumstances surrounding the injury, described as a near-fatal accident and will spend his whole life in recovery. He also spoke out about the incident and how it affected his relationship with Dobrik. After releasing the first episode, Wittick pivoted to Patreon because the footage of his injuries were deemed too graphic for YouTube. His Patreon account gained 37 followers in 10 days, making him one of the most followed creators on the platform and the highest paid creator of 18 plus content on the platform at the time. And he was seriously injured. They were trying to silence him. There was a lot of stuff in the background, shady stuff that David and his number one assistant, Natalie, were doing. In March of 22, it was revealed in leaked footage of an upcoming documentary by fellow YouTuber Casey Neistat, and in an episode of Dobrik's podcast Views, that Dobrik was blaming Jeff for the accident. Dobrik allegedly, Dobrik allegedly stated that the accident involving the excavator excavator, sorry, I don't know why I can't talk today, was the idea of Wittick and that he should be taking more responsibility, which is an insane take for almost killing your friend and illegally driving an excavator while filming. And they tested it with other people like it was a joke, like they did all these crazy stunts. And Wittick has said that he literally told him to go slow and not be whipped around like the video shows. And all David cared about was getting the shot. He was obsessed with it. They were out there for like 11 hours. And Wittick denied in a response video on his channel, Jeff, F Jeff FM, with a response. Wittick asserted that he refused to appear on an episode of Views, claiming that Dobrik would attempt to manipulate him and his words and edit it so it looked like Wittick was to blame for his physical and emotional trauma, along with the sense of discomfort around the individual causing so much suffering. In June 22, it was revealed that Dobrik was being sued by Jeff Wittick in relation to the 2020 accident. The lawsuit does not detail the specifics for a myriad of injuries Wittick experienced, although in his 2020 docuseries, it was heavily mentioned that he faced the possibility of losing his eye, which included after the claim of February that he almost died the day of the accident in response to D Dobrik's claim that Wittick knew how risky the stunt was. And just a reminder, David, David Dobrik is a coward who's running from these lawsuits and trying to put it out as long as possible so Jeff runs out of money, but people are doing this only if Jeff wins, so I don't think that's going to last much longer. But David did ask the judge to dismiss the lawsuit and award Wittick nothing. Water break. Also, I've watched so many different interviews of Jeff, and he said they stopped paying his medical bills, and that's all he wanted was for them to pay his medical bills. He went through multiple surgeries, and they started not making payments. Natalie, his assistant, claims on the Views podcast she never received them, which I think is just a blatant lie, and she's Janine Maxwell of the David Dober universe. Jeff also claims that all of his friends turned on him. He was kicked out of the group by silence. Jeff claimed that a Vlog Squad member, Jonah, said that David told him he couldn't film with Jeff anymore, and since all their careers relied on David, they listened. Then they canceled the video they were going to shoot. In my opinion, David Dobrik is a monster. Natalie is Janine Maxwell and an evil henchwoman. Jeff deserves so much justice. I've been through this. His life is forever changed. He will never be the same. His memory, how he lived his life will never be the same. He had so many injuries that will affect the rest of his life. And David has the audacity to blame him. 
trying to dismiss a lawsuit that he could have easily paid for. And in my opinion, he needs to be held accountable. He ruined people's lives. The rest of his life, Jeff will be affected by this accident. He had more than enough money to pay for Jeff's injuries. I implore the judge to award Jeff a lot of money. This is his new forever. If you look into David's vlogs, you will see a pattern of his behavior and recklessness and negligence. In my opinion, he has the restaurant and the Snapchat deal. And Jeff, Jeff should be paid out for the rest of his life. And the fact that David is avoiding this and being a monster about it shows just what like a vile human him and Natalie are. And I think it's absolutely disgusting that anyone is platforming him and anyone still films or associates with David Dobrik. I think he is an unfeeling, cold, rich 20-something. And he, if he's old enough to ruin a life, if he's old enough to destroy someone's life, he's old enough to pay out for that. And whatever lawyer suggested he stop paying and denying, I think that was the worst move he could have made. Yeah, it might have been a liability, but also you have to think of public perception. The public, I used to watch the vlogs, I used to be a fan, and I just think he's an absolute monster pretty much now. And then I learned recently that one of the influencers who was dating a vlog squad member who had a chronic illness has accused Annalise Jr. is her name, has accused the vlog squad members of getting drunk, breaking her foot, and it caused her chronic illness. So let's get into that. So in 2021, during a live stream on Thursday, Marie explained that her illness was linked to an accident in May of 20. 19 when she broke her foot someone in the vlog squad was drunk and an idiot and they're the reason why i have my chronic illness they were drunk they stepped on my foot twice she has been open about her chronic illness on social media and has shared her struggles which i think is amazing it makes people with chronic illnesses feel less alone and less like they're isolated because being chronically ill especially when you're young or any point in your life, is super isolating, and people do not understand. Maybe in my next podcast I will go over my full story, but I wrote an article about it if you want to check it out. So anyway, May-Thurner syndrome is what she has, and it's a condition that can increase the risk of deep vein thrombosis, a life-threatening blood clot. Man, blood clot usually in the leg. Maria said that she has also been diagnosed with lymphedemia, a long-term condition that causes swelling in the body and tissues, according to an article by Columbo in 2021. I think the most shocking part of this situation was how the vlog squad handled it. But after learning about Jeff, it's really not that shocking because they don't care about the members. They only care about the money. That has been proven over and over. Marie said, not even my friends knew before I told them because I was told to keep it a secret for many years. It kind of gotten to the point where I couldn't handle it any longer. Marie talks about how keeping it silent affected her mental health and her relationship with a vlog squad member, Joe. I literally understand exactly what she's going through and I couldn't imagine not being able to talk about it and how it affected me I think that would take such a hard toll on anyone's mental health I mean being chronically ill is hard enough without having to keep it a secret for a bunch of youtubers who make millions of dollars but about her relationship with Joe she said Joe did nothing wrong, but added she sometimes feel that she wouldn't be in this position if she didn't know Joe. It's something I'm working on with my therapist, she said. I know it was an accident, but it still triggers me because I had to keep it all inside. Then David Dobrik, on one of his vlogs, who exploited all their pain, emotional, physical, of his members, he didn't care. 
had Joe talk about their breakup and exploiting their pain for views. The result was Marie was sent death threats. Guy, stop sending death threats for celebrities, influencers, pretty much characters to you on a screen. This is called a parasocial relationship where you feel connected to someone you know through media, whether it's social, television, interviews, whatever you want, but you don't actually know them. Stop sending death threats. What is wrong with people? It was a YouTube breakup. Anyway, justice for Annalise Jr., the citations in this podcast were David Dobrik's Wikipedia, Jeff Wittick's Wikipedia, and the article by Columbo in 2021, which you can find everything linked to these articles in my blog, chronicinquisition.com. Now, my final thoughts on this are, as someone who's chronically ill, and it was directly affected by a drunk driver hitting me, I don't know why anyone would support David Dobrik. He's ruined two people's lives. And he does not care. He cared about their silence. He cared about the money. He cared about everything but the people who really made him famous. Because without his friends, he would not be popular. It's like the mommy vloggers. Without their children, they would have nothing, which is something I might talk about in a future podcast because family vloggers are just horrible and explo- exploiting their children. I think we. Really can see that in the Ruby Frankie case, which is something I probably will talk about. But, in general, there are no consequences for these influencers. They get to keep the platform. Colleen Ballinger, James Charles, they still are allowed on YouTube, which I think is absolutely insane and harmful to especially young people. But, just in general, why platform these monsters? Why support them? Why not step in and deplatform them? Money can't be everything in these kind of companies because real people, real fans, real supporters were affected. Adam McIntyre, Becky, Oliver. And I think YouTube needs to hold these people accountable. I think all social media platforms need to hold these people accountable. But they won't because they're corporations who want money. And I could go on about this for a long time, but I think that's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you if you listened and follow me on all the social medias, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, threads. I'm on all of them. And um, I think next week we will talk about James Charles and Colleen Ballinger because she's back and he's back for no reason except money and people are accepting them back and i think that's absolutely bananas so tune in for next week thanks guys i will see you next time